everyone, it's Bethany, and in this video I am making a really neat felt photo board for some family members for Christmas. So I'm just starting to do a little bit of Christmas gift giving with my Cricut, and I am getting some things set aside. So I purchased this felt photo board from Target. It is 14 inches by 14 inches, and it comes on a little um, wooden base or faux wood base. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little iron-on design around here, add some text, and just get the board a little bit more personalized and I thought that this would be a really fun gift idea. This is also a fun idea for um, college students who are decorating dorm rooms or anything like that because this is a fun little photo display board that would be really really sweet. So I'm going to be using this board. I'm also um, using some scissors and a weeding tool. I have some everyday iron on here. I'm also going to be using and pressing the design to my felt photo board with my Easy Press Mini. And then I'm going to show you in Design Space how I'm going to get a design all ready to go and cut out. I'm also going to cut it out on my Cricut Explore Air 2 and I'm going to be using a 12 by 24 mat just because the design I'm using is going to be running just a tad too big for a 12 by 12 mat. Okay, before we get into Design Space, I'm going to go ahead and and if you're new here, we do a little question of the day. Um, so be sure to pop down into the comment section and tell me the answer to this question. So today's question is, why do you craft? I love this question and I also love hearing about what you're currently crafting. So be sure to pop down into the comments, let me know why you craft, what is your purpose for crafting, and then also let me know what you are crafting right now. I love hearing about what is on everyone's craft table. All right, let's go ahead, pop into Cricut Design Space, get everything all ready to go and cut out, and we'll get this put all together. Okay, so now that we're in Cricut Design Space, I'm going to come over to the Shapes box. I'm going to select a square, and then I am going to make this 14 inches by 14 inches because that is the size of the felt photo frame that I'm working with. I'm also going to make this a light gray color just so I can get an idea of what it's going to look like in the end as I'm designing. Now I'm going to go over to the text box, and I am going to come up to the fonts right up here, and I'm going to type in Kaiden, which is K-Y-D-E-N, and that is the font I'm going to be using as I design here. So I am going to add the word memories and you can type in whatever you'd like. You can say family, you can say grandkids, anything that you would like to personalize your board. And then I'm going to make this a little bit bigger and I'm going to have it I'm going to have it be right down here at the bottom. And then I'm going to grab another text box. And while clicking shift, I am going to click the period button so that I can get a right arrow. And I am going to just do a bunch of these little right arrows. And I'm going to make a little border with this little arrow design. I thought this would be really, really cute. So I'm just going to start fiddling with how big I want things. And you can just kind of keep playing around with it all the way up until when you cut. So you can just kind of keep designing. And I'm going to grab, whoops, keep grabbing that back piece. But I'm going to grab my little border here. Bring it down and you can shorten it by taking away pieces of that little arrow or you can add to make it longer. So that's another way that is really fun about personalizing your own borders. Okay, so I think I'm going to start just about there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece which has the little right arrows on it and I'm going to come up and I'm going to duplicate it. And then I'm just going to drag it up to the top. I am going to double click and then I'm going to add even more so that I can elongate it. So I think right about there will look good. Okay, now what I'm going to do is again, I'm going to select this. I'm going to duplicate it. And while holding shift down on my keyboard, I'm going to grab this little um, rotating arrow and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees so that I can have it right over here. Now, as you'll notice, it's too long now, so what I can do is kind of line it up where I intend to put it. I can double click, and then I can remove two of the little Vs, or maybe even three, to make it the size that I want it. So that looks just about right to me. And I can kind of keep playing with how I want that to look. 
Okay, and now what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to take my side piece of my border, come over and duplicate it, and I'll make my final little space. So I'm just creating a fun little border around this frame. So again, double clicking, and I can take away about three of the little arrows, leaving it right about there. And I might even take out one more, and I should be just about good. Okay, so I'm going to make my memories just a little bit bigger and bring it right about here. That looks pretty good to me. Bring this down just a little bit. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hide this square because I no longer need it. I was just using it to design. And many of you are probably going to ask me why I wouldn't just attach all of these pieces together and have them cut out. But they are actually going to be um, as is if I attach these together. It would be too big for my machine. So it's at 12.8 inches by 12.47 inches, which is just a tad too big for the machine to cut out. So I'm going to go ahead and cut them out in separate pieces because of the size and also because it's going to help me save a lot of material if I just cut them out um, in little pieces together. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. We're going to go ahead and load our mat. I'm going to go ahead and select my explore and select make it. And then I'm going to have to grab my 12 by 24 mat because my piece is just a tad too big. And so I'm going to go ahead and select OK. What I'm going to do here is I am going to rotate my pieces just so that they all cut um, kind of in a line over here. It's just going to help me save as much material as I can. So I'm just selecting my pieces. I have the shift button selected on my Mac keyboard. And then I'm just going to rotate these around. This is a step you can skip if you have um, another piece of material you want to use. But for me, it just seems easiest to put all of my pieces all in a little tight space over here. Okay, since I'm working with iron on, I'm going to go ahead and select um, mirror to mirror my image and I'll click continue. I'm going to go ahead and select Everyday Iron-On. I'm going to load it shiny side down, ensure that mirror is turned on, and I'll get to cutting. Okay, so I have my roll of iron on here, and oops, I have a little bit of extra inside too. Sometimes I save some scraps in there. I need to put that in my new scrap bin because I probably did that before my scrap bin was created. I'll link a little tutorial to how I now store my scraps in case you guys want to see um, my new way, which has been a lifesaver. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my iron on. I kind of place it in the roll, and then I go ahead and while it's still rolled up, I line up just a small portion of it, just at the top, just like this, and then I let the rest roll down my mat. So it looks like I have just enough to complete this little cut, and we'll get it loaded in the machine. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my machine, load my mat, and we'll get to cutting. This is also a really, really great um, project to use scrap material on if you have some because you just need some skinny pieces. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and select the flashing Cricut button and we'll get to cutting. Okay, so I have my piece of iron on and I went ahead and trimmed out all of my extra so that I could save it for another project and I'm going to go ahead and grab a little corner of this and just start getting it weeded. So it's going to weed very, very easy and quick because it's just a little border and some text. So most of it is going to self-weed itself and then we'll just go back in and get um, the little middle of the letters. Okay, so I'm just continuing to weed this. It's super, super easy. I'm being careful, but iron-on is fairly forgiving when weeding. So it's definitely a lot easier to weed than adhesive vinyl. So, um, okay, so the question was... Our question today was, why do you craft? And I think the reason why I craft is um, I purely just enjoy crafting. I love doing it. Um, I also love to teach because I actually went to, to school to be a kindergarten teacher. And I just, I really do love to teach other people new things. Um, but also, especially during right now, I think one of my main whys for crafting is just to um, give me a nice positive place to kind of escape from everything that's going on and it just really helps me reduce some stress. Um, so that's not the reason why I started crafting but it's definitely the reason why I've continued crafting and 
been very intentional about getting my craft table lately so okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut everything apart now that I have everything weeded so I didn't cut it apart in the beginning because it's too hard to see exactly where to cut but once you have the design weeded it's much easier to see where to cut and in that screen where I was showing you where how you can rotate the images around on the cutting mat to cut a certain way you can actually also pull these apart so that they cut with a little bit more space in between um, so you can do that this way definitely saves more material but if you want to give yourself a little bit of grace in between cut lines then you can do that as well and just give yourself more space for trimming um, the pieces apart Okay, so I'm just going to bring my little felt board in here and I have it right on my mat. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the little tacks that come with it. Just set those to the side here. I have my easy press set to, um, to low. So it's preheated to low. It's green, meaning it is preheated and ready to go. And what I'm going to do is now iron on does have a sticky back. So once you place it, you can, um, know that it's going to stay there but you also can peel it up and move it around so it's just enough stick to get it to stay put but not enough stick where it's permanent or anything like that so it's just kind of a little temporary stick just to get everything laid down that looks really sweet and i zoomed out a little bit just so that you guys could see the whole board at once but all i'm doing is i'm just going to start placing all of my pieces where I want them on the board and I might have to trim down some of my pieces just so that I can get really close with my other layers because you don't want your pieces overlapping so I'm just going to go ahead and start placing all my pieces together here okay so I have this bottom piece down and then it's about just measuring where everything goes so I'm going to need to trim this as well Okay, and then this next piece is going down and again, you can fiddle with it and if you don't necessarily love exactly where it is, you can pick it up and move it again, but that looks pretty good to me. And then the final piece is going to go right over here. Okay, so now I have my Easy Press Mini. I'm ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and start on the Memories Word, and I'm going to do constant movement, and I'm going to do 30 seconds. So I'm just going to kind of go in mini circles, and I'm going to do the first four letters on the right, and then I'll move over to the next four letters. Just keep moving. Okay, and then I'll just move over to the next part. And so what I'll do is I'm just going to do 30 seconds constant movement around my entire border here. And I will get all of it pressed down onto my board. Now, if you find that these little strips are not staying put, which mine are, they're staying really um, good um, but if you find that the sticky is not quite enough sticky you can always use some heat resistant tape as well to just help keep those um, staying put while you run the little mini over them but mine are staying put really really well so I don't need anything extra Okay, so as I'm pressing, you can smell just a little bit of aroma. I think it's particle board, this faux wood. I think it's some type of particle board. So just kind of monitor as you're going. And if you need to remove a little heat, then you can. But everything's going down really, really nice. So what I'm going to do is since I started here, I'm going to just test and see. Oh, it laid down really, really nice. So I can go ahead and peel up in the order that I press down. So that looks perfect. Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, so I'm just continuing to peel up my little carrier sheets and everything is looking good now. I'm just going to make sure that I monitor and make sure everything has laid down. And if I see anything, there was a little bit of peeling on just two of those. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my press, rub down just a little bit. Um, this is the wonderful thing about the mini is you can just do a focus press in the areas that you notice any lifting from the um, iron on. So just go ahead and press a little bit longer and it will take care of it. I'm going to let that one just sit for a minute. I'm going to move on to the top one 
can start peeling that up. Again, monitoring, making sure everything is laying down, which it is. Easy peasy for sure. This is definitely a quick and easy craft. And it allows you to personalize. You could put someone's last name on it. You could put someone's first name on it. Um, but it is a really fun little gift idea as well. So there it goes. That laid down perfectly the second time. And that was the last little piece. Okay, and so this one comes with a little, um, couple little tacks, but you can purchase some decorative ones too, which is my intention of doing so. But you could just place little pictures on the um, little board and tack them on there, and then you can wrap it up or you can leave it blank, um, whatever you'd like to do. But I think it is a cute little idea. I think it makes for a wonderful gift, very easy to personalize and very, very easy to use with the mini as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Also, be sure you are subscribed if you are just visiting now because on November 1st, we are starting my Cricut gift guide and we're going to be doing 15 days in a row of Cricut gifts that you can make for friends or family. And it's just going to be a wonderful time to get inspired for what you can make with your Cricut machine. I'll be using all three of my machines and just get you inspired to create this Christmas. All right, everyone, be sure to give this a thumbs up if you thought this turned out really sweet and I will see you all in the next video.